I am Dr. Shok Kumar, Department of Geology and Industrial Fish and Fisheries, Ganga Singh College, Chapala, running under JP University, Chapala. Today I am going to switch, bit, uh, switch, uh, switch on the topic cryopreservation of gamete. Cryopreservation of gamete, it, ha it has become a new frontier in the field of aquaculture. It means this cryopreservation of male gamete has become possible till date. No, it has not been possible for the scientists to, to preserve the female gamete. Hence, only male gametes till date, um, only male uh, processes have been uh, of, uh, processes <coughs> have been prepared for preservation of male gamete or spermatozoa for a long period for five years, ten years, up to ten years. But it depends. Uh, on the raw milk, the raw milk. So for today, uh, for for aquaculture, for selective breeding, for hybridization, for uh, pre-commercial uh, uh, seed production, this has come forward. Uh, this process of cryogenic preservation. Cryogenic means long-term preservation. So long-term preservation of milt uh, has become uh, milt is uh, possible uh, because uh, only a spawn for uh, under control condition. The we can also get the spawn containing ovum uh, by stripping the by stripping the. Uh, and the belly of the female brood stock and uh, the, which comes and in a dish it is collected and this uh, and these uh, cryogenically preserved uh, spermatozoa or milt these are poured and then with the help of feather it is mixed and fertilization takes place and due to and after fertilization they and develop in hatchling and uh, in this way hence uh, this uh, this cryogenic preservation that is long term preservation of milk or uh, of uh, milk containing uh, spermatozoa male gamete uh, has become possible and uh, for that preservation we uh, certain steps are uh, certain steps uh, are involved in this preservation. First thing is, so uh, this preservation is of two types. Preservation of two types. First is non cryogenic, that is non cryogenic, that is a short term uh, preservation. And cryogenic preservation means long term preservation. So. Uh, these are the, uh, this is the difference. So, so for selected sample we keep alive, for selected sample we keep uh, uh, alive the spermatozoa in the milk. Now, now the first step is preparation of extender. Extender. This extender, uh, it is the first, first step, preparation of extender. It is used in both types of both types of uh, preservation, whether it is cryogenic or non-cryogenic. It is prepared. So some of the workable extender extenders are as follows: first, a, a NSCL 400 mg, CSCL 223 mg, uh, KCL 38 mg. NaH2 sodium bicarbonate and Na sodium bicarbonate 100 mg and NH2PO4 48 mg MgSO4 23 mg in 100 ml of distilled water these salts are uh, dissolved 
and second is so it, it is first type of extender second is the same a second is nsl 600 uh, there is difference a difference in weight second is, uh, in first it nsl was 400 but in second it is 600 so second b it is nsl is 600 mg calcium chloride 23 mg mg and uh, kcl 38 mg as in first and uh, sodium bicarbonate 100 mg nahco3 100 mg uh, ns2po4 that is 41 mg uh, mg so4 magnesium sulfate it is 23 mg uh, the salts are dissolved in 100 uh, ml of distilled water uh, these are uh, for uh, during preservation third is nscl cscl2 th- c is nscl now nscl we are seeing in the uh, we have seen in the above um, extenders the sodium uh, chloride fluctuates here also in third it is 700 uh, nscl is 750 ml calcium mg 750 mg calcium chloride 20 mg uh, potassium chloride 20 mg sodium bicarbonate nsco3 is 20 mg in uh, they, these salts are dissolved in 100 ml of distilled water so uh, only uh, in out of the three uh, this is extender means the last extender where nscl and uh, nscl 750 mg cscl 220 mg and potassium chloride 20 mg uh, uh, sodium bicarbonate 20 mg these are dissolved in 100 uh, ml of distilled water it is used in uh, non cryogenic c this last one is used in non cryo preservation means n- not long term preservation it is c and, and the a and b uh, where nscl 400 mg cscl 2 23 mg the same cscl 2 kcl 2 NaHCO uh, NaHCO3 uh, NaHCO3 uh, these uh, N, uh, ammonium and uh, NaCO3 and uh, NH2PO4 uh, these are and uh, they are similar almost similar and in A and B A and B are for cryogenic preservation and C is for and um, non cryogenic preservation now <coughs> uh, now non cryogenic uh, preservation it is very short term preservation that is um, the milk raw milk containing spermatozoa they are preserved for 3 to 4 days hence it is non cryogenic it is not uh, long term it is non cryogenic preservation and 3 to 4 days for 3 to 4 days uh, non cryogenic and the milk sample is <coughs> uh, diluted with extender stored in a thermocol chamber with ice the extender wh- what we have prepared what we have prepared in non cryogenic that is C, the non cryogenic preservation that is c type extender and then it that that and milk sample is first uh, diluted with extender the milk sample is uh, sample is uh, diluted in extenders the samples are diluted in extenders the milk sample are diluted in extenders and uh, stored in Uh, and the milk sample are uh, stored in thermocol chamber that is uh, and with ice or in refrigerator so that the temperature 
should not lie. That should be in preserved condition in refrigerator. Extender C is found more easy and effective. Extender C, C have, have been found more easy and effective for non cryogenic preservation. Uh, for such non cryogenic preservation, uh, milk samples are brought to now gradually. Milk samples are brought to room temperature after before uh, inseminating the egg sample for better real because we stripe we stripe the abdomen of the female brood stock and that uh, after stripping the spawn comes in the dish and in that dish uh, we uh, and the milk sample which has been with uh, which was kept in uh, refrigerator um, in extender and uh, that is uh, the, we um, take uh, it from outside from it uh, take it uh, from the refrigerator and um, later on we bring the milk sample on room temperature and then we pour it uh, on um, pour it uh, on the uh, um, pour over the um, spawn containing ovum ova and Fertilization takes place after mixing with the feather. Fertilization takes place after mixing with the feather. Now, it was all about the non cryogenic preservation. Now, cryogenic preservation that is long term preservation. It is asper uh, spermatozoa can be stored for years together in liquid nitrogen. In liquid nitrogen means nitrogen. Generally, in air remains in gas form, but at cool, uh, uh, at cool, uh, very cool uh, temperature is kept cooled, and this uh, nitrogen gas is uh, nitrogen gas um, becomes liquid and are kept in uh, thermos thermoflask uh, <laughs> liquid night and the temperature. Where at the temperature uh, in minus one nine zero degrees Celsius, minus one at minus one nine zero degrees Celsius, uh, where uh, the temp all the uh, where uh, at this temperature or uh, at this temperature all the biochemical activity of living cell ceases. That is. The biochemical activities of the living cell means spermatozoa that see that seizes that do not uh, no activity is found there and it seizes. Further, the milk is uh, diluted in extender as I had already explained that it is uh, milk is diluted in extender and mixed with cryoprotectant. Cryoprotectant means. Cryoprotectant means why? Why it? Why, what is cryoprotectant? Cryoprotectant. Cryoprotectant. It is a chemical which protects the cell from chilling injury. From chilling, there be there, generally from chilling. There, there as we have as we uh, as we keep some ice in our uh, hand. A chilling injury, our skin shrinks. So, from chilling injury, eh, eh, this cryoprotectant eh, eh, protect the spermatozoa, protect the cell membrane of the spermatozoa. This eh, cryoprotectant, eh, which is eh, eh, and eh, they protect the cell from chilling injury during the course of freezing. So, at minus one. Nine zero one ninety degrees Celsius. That is a very the nitrogen becomes liquid and it is kept as sperm is kept there. And from chilling injury, cryoprotectant we use cryoprotectant that is glycerol and DMSO, dimethyl sulfoxide that is DMSO that is cryoprotectant. Now 
the extenders uh, now protocol for cryo preservation are as follows the protocol for cryo preservation is first is preparation of extenders which i had already mentioned uh, that different uh, type different uh, uh, salts were, uh, were used they should be measured with accurately and they should be dissolved in 100 ml in 100 ml in double distill in the distilled water or double distilled water and are the uh, so the accurately and that should be uh, that those salts should be in solution form in distilled water and the desirable ph of that salt solution should be 7.27.7.2 7.3 that it is the desirable ph of the solution kept under refrigeration kept under refrigerator uh, and can be used safely for a month this this type of extender can be workable uh, only for one month they cannot uh, be stand and they, they can become a spoil after one month so up to one month they are uh, they, they are working now the second is uh first is preparation of uh, extender second is preparation of diluent diluent means diluent it means two things are mixed dmso and glycerol so glycerol and dmso so first is the car protectants used in uh, present protocol are dmso and a combination of dmso and glycerol dimethyl sulfonoxide and glycerol two things are here and diluents are the hence it is called diluent dmso and glycerol the cryo protectant is mixed <coughs> directly in the mill sample the cryo protectant uh, is not mixed cryo protectant is not mixed directly into the uh, milk sample uh, it is mixed first with extender in the required ratio first we had already prepared extender so this diluent is not directly mixed in the with the spermatozoa but it is mixed with the this cryo uh, diluent or cryo protectant is mixed mixed with the diluent for the first uh, in initial uh, it is uh, diluent is mixed with the extender um, uh, in the required ratio and then it is kept into the refrigerator due to its because it due to its ex uh, exothermal reaction uh, now it is kept in refrigerator the ratio of external and cryo protectant in different diluents are as follows the ratio of uh, extender and cryo protectant uh, first we had uh, prepared extender and second it is cryo protectant so the ratio should be in the follow as i am going to mention first is, uh, first first diluent is pre prepared glycerol 10 ml dmso 5 ml and extender now the diluents are mixed with the extender so 10 ml glycerol dmso 5 ml and extender 90 ml in this ratio extender 90 ml and 10 ml glycerol dmso 5 ml second is glycerol again 10 ml uh, dmso 8 ml and extender 90 ml and third is dmso 15 ml and extender 65 ml so without glycerol eh, without glycerol only d d dimethyl sulfonoxide eh, sulfoxide that is 15 ml and extender 65 ml eh, the working ratio of milt and diluent is 1 is to 4 the working ratio of milt and diluent is 
वन इंटू फोर मिल्ट शुड बी वन एम एल एंड डायलुएंट शुड बी फोर एम एल सो नाउ इन दिब्रेशन नाउ इक्लिब्रेशन इट विल आई विल नरेट इट इन नेक्स्ट क्लास आवर नेक्स्ट क्लास थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू